Hello guys, my name is Omar Jisoo. Welcome to another episode of VFX Tools. Well, today we'll be taking a look at how we composited 3D renders in our VFX shots. Today's topic is a very broad one and the conversation never stops. So for easier understanding, we'll be taking a look at one of our previous shots with a CGI render in it. The shot is called All and you could click the card above to go watch the short film. So I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys today. If you have seen the shot, I hope you enjoyed it and let us know what you think about it in the comment section below. So before we shot this shot, we had not really experimented with compositing 3D renders in our shots. We had worked on Z's arm in Z the beginning, but for some reason, this effect felt different. So with our little experience in compositing CGI renders, we have learned over that short period of time that some things have to be put in place and one is your render sitting well in your scene two does the lighting and reflection on your render match the scene well even is your answer to all these questions i've asked don't worry the vfx tools doctor is here to help you and this is how you could fix those issues you must be wondering how can a 3D render sit well in our scene? It's not like as if there's a chair I've put for that 3D render to sit well in the scene. No, no issues. What I'm trying to say here is that you can make your 3D render sit well in your scene through a process called camera tracking. Well, camera tracking is the process in which the camera motion of your shot has been imitated by the 3D camera in your compositing or 3D software, which makes it easy for you to be able to add 3D objects to your scene. Or you can camera track your scene in so many softwares and there are actually a lot of softwares existing for this camera tracking purpose. Our suggestions for camera tracking softwares are Blender, It's Film Pro and After Effects, at least they are on the cheap side. The thing about camera tracking is that it's quite expensive and it's also quite expensive because it takes a lot of time to camera track your scene well depending on how tricky your shot is and you all know that time is money so you guys can relate right. Enough of the chit chat on how expensive camera tracking is. The thing is for camera tracking to work your shot has to be shot in the best way possible. And what do I mean by the best way possible? Now listen, the best way possible means that your shot was shot well, that there's enough details in the scene for you to be able to track. And how can you have enough details for you to be able to track? First of all, avoid motion blur. And you can avoid motion blur by increasing your shutter speed. And also another method to actually get more detail in your scene to track is by increasing your aperture value so that the depth of field becomes deep and everything is going to be clear for tracking. Now, this process applies to filmmakers that use cameras. And I know mobile filmmakers are already looking at me like, bro, 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 all these settings that you're saying, we don't understand them. Yes, when we're using phones to shoot, we don't understand any of this. We're just like, you know, I go shoot your stuff. If it doesn't camera track, I'm going to reshoot. Well, for mobile filmmaking, our phones have all these settings default. So they are not changeable. On the iPhone with an app like Filmic Pro, there's a possibility to be able to actually work with these settings, but most filmmakers not using iPhones can actually experiment with these settings. So for mobile filmmakers, my best advice for you is to shoot your shots with less motion because when there's like a jitter in your camera, there's going to be motion blur and that can affect your camera track. Or well, I've been there before. So with all this in place, if your scene is camera trackable, well, your 3D render can sit well in your scene. Up to number two, you're now wondering, okay, we're done with the camera tracking part now. How do we make the lighting and the reflection match the scene? Well, this is how you could make your lighting and reflection on your CG render match your scene. First of all, for the lighting, before you shoot your shot, take note of all lighting sources coming into your scene. Most times you shoot outdoors, so we take note of the sun's positions. And at times when we are shooting with other sources of light, we take note of the position of all those sources of light. So when we are in our 3D software or composition software, we can be able to recreate the light based on that information we had gotten down. But somehow, somehow, I think in most indie filmmaking cases, you forget to take note of the sun. No doubt, no doubt, I'm guilty of that aspect too. While we were shooting already, I forgot to actually take note of the sun's position and 
on that lighting part of the scene. But this was what I did. I zoomed in closely to where the shadow was casted on the scene. And I realized, oh, if the shadow is casted in this direction, that means the sunlight is coming from this direction, which is making the shadow fall like this. So in our 3D software, I created that same lighting position for our CG render so that the shadow cast like that and also the light is the render like that. Now, off to the reflection part. Everything in life has Fresnel. Shout out to Andrew Price. Andrew Price, you're a genius. I hope you see this video. Well, Andrew Price has educated a lot of us about Fresnel. So in life, everything has reflection. Even paper has a reflection. It's not quite obvious, but it has a reflection. The truth is most renders will sit well in your scene if your render actually reflects objects in your shot, like as if they are real life counterparts were in the shot. Now, how can you do that? That is possible with your environment map. But indie filmmakers are probably asking me this question like, wait, how many times have I said indie filmmakers? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry if this has disrespected y'all. So, you are probably wondering, how can we get an environment map? Well, there's an app called Google Street View. Shout out to CGG for suggesting this software. So I've been using this app since like the very beginning of this CG compositing story. With the Google Street View app, you could snap an environment map, which is going to save on your phone's directory and you could transfer it to your system and import it into your 3D software or compositing software as an environment map. But the thing about this environment map issue is that there is a better, but you have to pay the dollar bills way to get this environment map. There's a link in the description below on how to do that one also. It's not that expensive. With all this in place, I'm pretty sure your render is sitting well in your scene and looking so good already. But you still have to add like a little bit of touch so that everything blends in perfectly. Now, that's where we actually come to the compositing part. So Blender has some really rad compositing features, but most times I use an external software to actually composite our 3D shots. So you might have to do a little bit of color correction at times, light wraps, um, lens blurs, Gaussian blurs, so that everything sits well. Then also the final grid makes everything beautiful. I'm pretty sure with all this, your render is looking like as if it actually belongs to your shot. And yeah, this is a beautiful story. I love to have a conversation on this again. Well, I've come to the end of this video and I hope you guys actually liked and enjoyed this video and also learned something new because that's just the main point of this video. Well, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Suggestions and tips on how to improve this content that's going to keep coming soon. And please, we do have a Patreon page where you could go support us to keep making more cool videos like this. And if you are a new viewer here, what are you waiting for? Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. See you soon. Stay safe. Peace out.